This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a Whirlpool dishwasher that is not melting the soap. So when you finish the cycle, it's not cl cleaning the dishes very well. And also their soap is still basically left in the soap dispenser. The soap dispenser opens up, but it doesn't really have any of the soap missing. So when I ran this dishwasher and tested it, the water should be up around where this heating el element was, but it wasn't even showing up. So that usually means that there's something wrong with the fill valve. The fill valve is not letting in enough water, probably because it's worn out. I did confirm though underneath the sink that the water valve against the wall that supplies water to the dishwasher was turned all the way counterclockwise as far as it could go, meaning it was fully open. So we had the right amount of water coming in, but the fill valve was not letting in that water in the right amount of time. So it just wasn't filling up very much. So to remove it, I removed the lower panel by taking out two Phillips head screws. I'm going to reach underneath the sink and turn the valve all the way clockwise to the right, really tight, so there's no water coming out. I'm going to pull out these Torx 15 screws along the perimeter. And these aren't all of the screws. These are the ones on the right and left side. These are the last um, five, I think, on each side. And that's going to let the front panel come off. And that will give me a little bit more room to work. So I'll lift up on the front panel. And that's going to slide it off of two little lugs that are holding it. Get that out of the way. And now I've got the water turned off. I've got it unplugged. I use my pliers to spin off the water line. And now I'm going to use... Uh, also, the water didn't fully turn off, so I'm going to let that water line sit in a bowl so it won't leak everywhere. Sometimes that happens, the valves on the wall don't fully turn off. I've got a crescent wrench I'm going to use to grab the brass elbow coming off the fill valve. I'm going to turn it to my left so that I can loosen it and get it off of the fill valve, because I'm going to reuse the same brass elbow on the new fill valve. And grab it with a pair of pliers, turn it a little further. And now you should be able to spin it off by hand. I did put down a little towel underneath to catch any water that would come out when I remove the uh, fill valve hose. Cut that off. And now I'm using a quarter inch drive to take out one quarter inch bolt that's holding the fill valve. I'm going to then grab it and pull it slightly to my right by about a quarter inch. That's going to let loose on the metal lugs. I can pull it off. And now I can get to the uh, hose clamp that's bringing water on the back. Take that off and take the two electrical connectors off. Now I'm using some Teflon tape to wrap around the threads of the brass elbow. I'm going to wrap around about four or five times. And I am turning the uh, elbow clockwise as I put it on. This is just going to keep a nice watertight seal when I put the brass elbow back into the fill valve. So I'm going to thread it back into the fill valve. This is the new fill valve. So they're uh, just uh, a solenoid that gets energized with 110 volts. Sometimes they wear out, and then they don't let in enough water. So this is a brand new one. I'll use my crescent wrench to get it even tighter. So I'm going to just turn it slightly further. There we go. Yeah, hook up the electrical connectors. <clears throat> Make sure they're on there nice and tight. And I'll hook up the black hose 
that is used to take water from the fill valve into the dishwasher. Get that all the way on there tight, and then I use my pliers to pinch in on the hose clamp and get that snug up into position so it's a nice watertight seal. There we go. Now I can fit the metal lugs back into the slots and then once I have that I'll push it a little bit to my left to lock lock it in and then I'll add the quarter inch screw back in to hold it. Alright, got that locked in, so I'll grab my quarter inch screw, zip that in to hold it. And I put the fill line back on, I turn the water back on underneath the sink, and I'm just going to test how well it fills, fills up. <clears throat> I can hear the water coming in there a lot faster than it was when I first tested it. and the sound of uh, the water getting pushed around by the circulation pump is a lot louder than it was because there's a lot more water in there. I did notice too that the uh, greater amount of water created more water pressure and that was able to knock the soap out of the soap dispenser. So this dishwasher is going to clean really well now. So when you look in you should see Okay, this is a good test you can do too. You can put a cup facing up on the top rack and then uh, let it run for say 10 minutes and that cup should be all the way filled up. This is the normal amount of water now that came in. It's right up around the heating element. So this is about four times more water than it was before. So it's working much better. So when we press start we can hear that it's just a lot stronger sound. So we'll go ahead and put the front panel back on. We gotta make sure this goes over here and this part of the panel goes over this lug. I'll open the door a little bit and then I'll lift it and slide it down over those lugs. There we go. Now we can go ahead and add those Torx 15 screws back in. And we're almost done. I'll just zip those in. And when we gave it a test, it was just cleaning so much better. So hopefully this will help you too. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really like the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.